how does it feel? I think his team talk, you know, was uh, not only the day of the game, it was during the whole week. He was very meticulous about, uh, about uh, looking at the opposition, you know, getting his team ready to know what the opposition is going to do, how, how are they like. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, I was thinking even too much in a way that, you know... <laughs> Does it take the fun out of football? Uh, yeah, it does sometimes. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's always... These days, it's so important uh, to win. And, uh, and as a manager, you want to prepare your player the best way possibly you can. And uh, when you know the opposition is going to do that, when you know that they are good at, it's obviously easier then, you know, to stop, to stop them doing what they're good at. But as, as players, you already know that. I mean, like, who you come to face, like if you're playing uh, likes of Kevin Davis at Bolton, I mean, you know, you know what to expect. Surely exactly. No, normally, you know, at this level, yeah. you know your players. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, you play them already five, six times, yeah, yeah. even more. Yeah. So you know exactly what they are good at or not. Yeah. But you know, as a team, sometimes uh, you can always learn a little something, and uh, that's why I think these days every every manager does it. And um, you know, the, 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 with the video, with the match analysis, um, it's so. Um, it's so clear, you know, what, what you can get from the opposition. And Orange Man, you have uh, something to ask us. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, you know, Liverpool has been a top two team. They went, down, went to top four. That was a long time teams. ago you talked about <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, man. Sorry. I mean, hey, we'll, we'll come back soon. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> just mind your own team, will you? Okay, sorry. Then, then now it's a mid-table team. Um, <laughs> the, the one who started, I mean, I think Gerard Willis started this sort of a change in the yeah. And Rafa Benitez can uh, really make the real, starting to do the real changes. But do you think that uh, that is the case? And if that's the case, do you think Rafa Benitez was asked to leave since too soon? I think, uh, <clears throat> no. Personally, I think um, he had plenty of time, you know, uh, you know, to do what he wanted. He bought, I think, 60 players or something during his, uh, his reign at Anfield, which is a lot. And at the end of the day, you know, uh, what fans wanted, that was the, that was the title. Uh, for one season, you know, he's been, uh, he's been quite near, you know, finished yeah. second. second yeah. But that was it, really. OK, he won the Champions League. Uh, he's been in the final, you know, two years later, which is a great achievement. But what the fans want, it's, uh, it's the Premier League title. And at the end of the, at the, end of the day, you know, uh, he just couldn't achieve that. And at the end of, uh, of his time at Anfield, I think everybody had the feeling that uh, it was time for a change. Okay, and uh, this question is from Tarani Darren. And he says, um, between the treble in 2001 and winning the Champions League in uh, 2005, which one was more meaningful uh, to Liverpool fans? I think the Champions League final in 2005. Because obviously the Champions League is the, is the biggest, you know, the biggest cup in... Uh, in world football, let's say, and uh, and even the trouble in 2001 was great. I think for for the Liverpool fans and, and especially I think the way the Liverpool won the game, you know, uh, losing so three 0 yeah. yeah, that was a, that was so dramatic that it's a night that everybody is going to remember. And uh, speaking like of the, the final trouble, of uh, yeah. at Istanbul, there's actually a story behind it with you because uh, you were actually in um, Scotland at that time. Could you, yeah. could you like share with us uh, your experience when you saw Liverpool? Yeah, unfortunately, you know, I wasn't playing that much anymore under Rafa Benitez, so I was thinking, you know, that's the time for me you now to change. So I went on loan playing for, for Celtic Glasgow. And uh, obviously, I didn't know what would happen uh, later. I was thinking, you know, we, we just reached the last 16 uh, with the Steven Gerrard goal, uh, last kick of the game against Olympiacos. So everybody was thinking, yeah, against Juventus, who were very strong at the time, uh, we've got no chance. So I went to Celtic without thinking 
<laughs> five months later, uh, <laughs> Liverpool is going to play a Champions League final and, uh, and win it. So I was, uh, because I was on loan, I was only staying uh, three and a half months. I, I never, you know, I wasn't looking for an Did apartment. Did you play against Rangers? Flat. Did you play in the old firm derby? Uh, I played, I played. But let me finish first the story. <laughs> <laughs> so I was watching this, uh, this, uh, this Champions League final uh, on my own in my uh, hotel room. And, uh, and I can tell you that uh, I was probably the saddest person on earth because I would have wished, you know, to be part of, uh, of the squad even if I would not have played maybe from the start. Uh, and then the next day when I was uh, watching the parade, you know, in the Liverpool street with nearly a million people with the with the cup, uh, I think I must have watched for a minute and then I just uh, switch off. Just watch it. Just too much yeah. to handle. Well, there's another question here from uh, Kartigan Gopal. He says, in the future, who will tend to be a better manager, Gerard or Carragher? Hard to say. I would, I would be tempting to say Carragher, maybe, because I think, uh, I think he's really into it. I think uh, he, wants, he really wants to, to become a manager. I think he, he's got what it takes. And uh, even Steven Gerrard as well, you know, it's, it's always difficult. Uh, He's just going to play Phil Collins songs though, all the time, right? Yeah, <laughs> but uh, well, you know, when, when you think, when you speak with people about Mark Hughes, they never thought he would be a manager. Yeah. When he was a player, you know, he wasn't into uh, managing or anything. And now you know he's managing uh, his think, third club or something like that in the, in the Premiership. Okay, and uh, from um, Israel Rizwan, uh, pick your starting eleven. Uh, that's a All Liverpool players. very, very hard uh, question. Israel. Very yeah. hard. No, I, would, I, would, I would say that... Uh, Ray Clements in goal. Yeah, maybe go on, you can help me. But, uh, <laughs> it's, you know, I think... I'm this of all I time? Think You're would on say, the bench, yeah? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would be happy to make the bench. Chris <laughs> <laughs> Dobler, because you're from Zimbabwe, no. isn't it? Yeah. Chris Dobler, no wonder, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, but I think we will, we will have to discuss that all night, oh, and, even, okay, yeah. and even tomorrow morning like would, we wouldn't we wouldn't agree, right. and myself it would take me hours. Tough decisions now, Greg, hey, you've got a question. Yeah, obviously in your career you've come out up against a lot of good strikers. Yeah. Uh, which would you say is the toughest, and also who is the best player that you've ever played with? Uh, the best striker I played against is definitely Cherry Henry. Mm. Cherry Henry, yeah, it was. Uh, they were, they were not a striker I was like fearing to play before the game. But when we were playing Arsenal, you know, playing Henry and Pires together, you know, because Henry was playing more on the, on the, on the left yeah. and tried to come back, you know, on no, his right. right. Yeah. So they were combining so well with, uh, with Pires and, uh, you know, the pace he had, uh, it was very, really, really hard to play against. And, and the then, best player that you've ever played with? Uh, definitely Steven Gerrard. Steven Gerrard Gerard by, uh, by far. All right, by far. and um, from uh, Faris Azaman, who is the best? No, that one is answered. Uh, Sharazin Iqmal, who's your preferred defensive partner at Liverpool? Your preferred defensive partner? Well, it uh, has to be uh, Sami Hipia, you know. I played, I played with him uh, five years, and from the, from the first game, we know, uh, I played against Villa. That was my, my debut for Liverpool. Uh, we had a clean sheet, and uh, I think, you know, it was a natural understanding. Were you close off the pitch as well? Yeah, we were close, yeah. but, not, but not that close that we were doing. Like, people were thinking in Liverpool, we do everything together. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were thinking uh, we, we nearly uh, share the same house. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no, they Sean, were, they, that's, Sean, what they, that's what they were thinking. It yeah. was that tight. <laughs> Sean, you've got a question. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like, uh, uh, if you could share your thoughts on um, uh, what has become quite topical in the game now. Uh, there's a lot been said and uh, uh, written about about the diving yep. that's, uh, that's affected our game. Well, what's, what's your thinking on that? Yeah, and I have a part B to that question. Is Suarez the worst diver ever? <laughs> yeah, so the first part, uh, diving is, uh, is definitely a concern, I think, and uh, something needs to be done. Uh, I don't know how, but I think the English FA, or in general, maybe UEFA or FIFA, they have to address the problem, because uh, me, now I'm retired, I'm like a fan. And when I watch a uh, football game, you know, I watch it as a fan as well. So I hate when I see, you know, people 
just dive and try to abuse the referee and try, you know, to win uh, penalty kicks and, uh, and cheat. You know, it's simply cheating and I think you need to do something. But do you think the refs are doing enough to curb the diving? The, the referees, are, are they doing enough? But, but don't the they get a directive? The, the, the problem is, you know, the referee and you come and you come back to uh, technology, using technology, yeah. video, because the referee, you know, when it happens, you have some dive. Yeah. Uh, some people, you know, like Suarez is doing at the moment, when they dive and you see it live, you think it's a penalty. Yeah. Even myself, when I watch a game first time, you think it's so a penalty. So the only way to stop it is retrospective banning. Yeah. Look back at it and go two games, two games. Definitely. Four. And uh, if you would use, you know, the, the technology and you will allow the referee, you know, no, I'm not sure. I just go, you know, on the sideline. It takes me, what, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. OK, that's a dive. OK, that's a car, that's a yellow car. I can tell you that next time the guy, before doing it, is going to think twice. How, how would you deal with divers uh, back in your time? How would we deal with that? You, you deal with the divers. I think time. in my time it wasn't as bad. To be honest, when I was playing, I can't remember uh, a player uh, in particular who was trying to, to die. Uh, maybe a little bit at the, at the start, you know, when we arrive in, uh, in the English Premier League from France. Maybe, yeah. But so why, why are they doing it more now? Yeah. I mean, are they less, less skillful or what? Get no. I think I think that's the foreign influence, really. Well, isn't it down to the, the pressures of the modern game as well? I mean, football is now so much more than just 22 players on a pitch playing a game. I mean, it's a massive business, it's bad, a massive money-making business. Don't you think it's down to that as well? I mean, I think the players that have a, a lot of responsibility, I mean, they need to get results. I think the you know the pressure is huge, yeah. and I think that people uh, or fans they have to understand. It's that uh, football, when you're a professional, it's not about enjoying yourself. Mm. Like you enjoy, yeah. you know, playing with your friend, the five a side yeah. on the street. You pay for what? You pay to win, not to enjoy yourself. But, uh, you well, know? Well, yeah, fair enough. But what, what, what's your thinking on, on the manager's role on this? Say, like, uh, for instance, uh, Nanny dives quite a lot for, for, for Manchester United. So shouldn't Alex Ferguson step in? I know he mentioned the issue of uh, Ashley Young uh, quite recently. But shouldn't uh, Ferguson step in and, and like warn Nani, say, uh, hey, listen, cut that out? Nani hasn't played in the last three or four years. No, no, he's been diving for a few years now. Yeah, but you know, now he uh, hasn't been I, I think, you know, if you're, if you're a manager, uh, you want to win. You, you yeah, have to win. And it's, it, and it's difficult. I think if there, is, if there is a player who wins you a penalty kick mm, and you good. win the game, yeah. What are you going to do after the game? Are you going to shout at him and say that's the <laughs> last time you do it? <laughs> Don't or, get us to the final or, anymore. Are you having, or are you going to be happy going home, having a nice uh, you know, glass of wine with three points in the bag? So that's the question. Say, do it again. <laughs> okay, now we're uh, going, moving on to something light. Uh, this is from uh, Loga Balan. Now, he asked you, since defenders mark opponents closely, who was the smelliest player you had to mark back in your time? Yeah. That's a funny question. <laughs> That's a funny question, yes. No, I don't you know. Can't you can't remember? Know. No, no, I no. think uh, Everyone's I can't remember. Everyone's smelly. Who didn't have perfume on? <laughs> you know, when you're sweating, I don't know anybody who don't smell when he's sweating. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah, right. Who smelled the best? Usually, you know, the Italian players before going on the pitch, you know, they spend five minutes in front of the mirror, you know. Just well putting the gel, well putting the gel, you know, make sure, you know, they look nice. Yeah. Huh? So uh, that must be the Italian, definitely. Must be the Italian, there you have it. And well Ross, do you have a question? Serious question. Coming from Switzerland, cheese or chocolate? Uh, chocolate. Good answer. <laughs>